I mean, things are changing very, very quickly now. I think, I think we're, I feel like we'll stall because of um, how many new things there are. Because when you get a lot of new things, then it's hard to understand what combinations or how to sort of ration things because there's only so much money, there's only so much funding, there's only so much um, personnel that can test all these new ideas. So I think science is going exponentially, but the rate of the act of testing, of putting p patients in trials and things like that, and that's still a, a hard concept for a patient to wrap their minds around, to be part of something that's experimental and unknown. So that's, in the end, I think that th there's, there's a little bit of a, um, uh, a, a narrowing of the tunnel, right? So there'll be a little bit of traffic behind, behind the, the walls of resources and people who are, are, are willing to participate in these things. Um, but I think what will potentially be the breakthrough in terms of, um, I can't, I, I'm like blanking on the word for it, <laughs> uh, of that sort of rate limiting step. So I think what will be the breakthrough um, behind that sort of funnel is potentially AI. So I think if we get computational um, analyses and sort of really, I mean, we have big data now, but we, we haven't been able to, to corral it. And I think if we can corral it and use big data to our advantage, we may be able to make sense of rare things that happen sort of across the board and bring them together because we have a way to computation, computationally pull them together rather than you know, manually call up people and say, do you have a case like this? Do you have a case like this? And put it all together.